The Hyperloop is a conceptual high-speed transportation system created by U.S.-based South African entrepreneur Elon Musk. The Hyperloop is a pressurized transport system. It's set to make travel easier between Los Angeles and San Francisco in the USA. A South African team from the University of Pretoria called Tuck Squadra has been invited to present their blueprint for the Hyperloop at the Texas A&M University. And the team captain is our guest this morning, Rory Sang Posholi, and he joins us from our Hatfield studio in Pretoria. Rory Sang, welcome. Good to have you. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, I can't, I can't complain, but I, I need you to explain to me what the Hyperloop actually is. Mm, well, the Hyperloop is essentially a high-speed transportation which consists of a low-pressurized tube where you have a pod traveling in the tube. Now, the, ad the advantageous factors of the Hyperloop is high speed, safety, and green energy. It's a faster trans transportation system that will be implemented traveling at 1,120 wow. kilometers an hour. Wow. Wow. Okay, so when we talk about a transportation loop, obviously this is not, it's not carrying you and I, is it? It's, it's obviously carrying other things. Uh, well, it's actually intended to carry passengers. Wow. So how it, sort of work, how it sort of works is you have a tube, a low pressure tube, that carries a port at high speeds and uses a magnetic field system between the pod and the actual tube to actually provide propulsion and levitation. As you can see with the pictures right here, the, so the system uses an array of solar panels to power it, thus making it, green, thus making it very safe and uses green energy. This is fantastic. I mean, this would revolutionize transport. It would revolutionize the way things are exchanged and how people travel, I can imagine. Is this, is this the idea? This is pretty much the idea. As the competition stated, it's been open to all university teams throughout the whole world, so there's several iterations available for the actual design. Now, such things, uh, uh, they did exist in, in the London underground, and then, of course, they were, they were replaced with trains. So why, why do we see an idea like this resurfacing? Mm. Well, if you look at the actual transportation system that was in London that you're referring to, it was all, in essence, rail. Now, when you look at fixed transportation, which is primarily rail, where you have a fixed network where, they, where the actual transporting tube travels on, rail has a big problem of high friction. Now, despite that, the fastest rail network system is in France, and it's able to get to speeds of around 575 kilometers an hour. The other alternative is in Japan, which uses a reoccurring new transportation system that's been going on for a while called maglev. What maglev essentially does is you have two conductive plates, two electromagnetic conductive plates, which both receive elect electricity to provide ma magnetic repulsion. Now, the fastest maglev train is in Japan, and it's able to get to 580 kilometers an hour. But the big problem with maglev is it's still exposed to ambient conditions in the air. Now, this is where Hyperloop comes in. By having a tube that you're able to control the conditions, we're able to reduce the pressure to roughly pressures similar to the cruising altitude of most commercial aircrafts. So in doing so, we're, we have to have a little energy input mm. to actually get a faster velocity, but it's much, much safer as the tube is suspended on earthquake-resistant pylons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's now get to your team and, and your proposed design. We, we, we have been putting it on the screens. I know you spoke, you spoke of it uh, mm. a little bit earlier and you spoke over the photographs, but talk to us a little bit more. I mean, what, what are you going to be proposing when you, when you take your trip with your team? All right. Well, the biggest factors in this actual design and this actual competition is primarily propulsion, getting the pot to transverse, and levitation. Now, there are various avenues, various iterations that we could adapt, but we're actually looking at implementing... An MFA, an MFA field, which is magnetic field architecture. As I said with magnetic levitation, maglev, you have electricity being fed to the plate and the train. So. With the Hyperloop and the MFA infrastructure that we're planning on implementing, electricity is only fed to the pod. So levitation is still maintained and propulsion is still maintained. But by having a low pressure system, we're able to transverse this much, much quicker. So we have, we have an MFA architecture that we want to implement. We also, if you see the color right there, that's our 
CFO, carbon fiber reinforced plastic space frame, which is seen throughout the aerospace industry, so in aircrafts and space frames. Yeah. Our space frame as well, adapted from industry throughout that's been used from spacecraft and aircrafts. So, oh, and another key factor of the Hyperloop is it's autonomous. Yeah. So we're reducing hum human error that may arise, but this, re this requires a very, very, very precise and well-engineered control system, which is the primary focus of the whole competition. This is absolutely fascinating. And, I, and, and we, we're so proud of you to, to be going there, to be presenting something like this. Uh, if you win and if your design is accepted, what then? What happens? What are, the, what are the prizes? And I mean, does it lead to sort of the development of a concept? Well, yeah, that's pretty much the core focus of the competition, to try get this Going, to try to get the development going quicker so we can actually get the implementation. I mean, although it's primarily focused between, in, or in California, between San Francisco and Los Angeles, there's now been two private organizations which are now taking part in the whole development. But when you look at the bigger picture and the global application, I mean, we're talking about a transportation system that generates its own electricity is much, much faster than any transportation system that's been seen before. So we're looking at challenging energy, transportation. We'll look, I mean, if you look at the COP21 that just took place in France right now, they were looking at a more greener system, a more greener eco-friendly system. And this is what's basically being tackled by this problem. Well, we wish you the best of luck. When are you off? Uh, we're scheduled to depart on the 26th of January. Okay. And we should be back on the 31st. Well, you keep us updated and you let us know what it's like when you get there. And, uh, and I'm sure you, I, I would imagine that this involves a meeting with Elon Musk as well. I'm sure you get to, you get to meet him and engage with him a bit. Oh, yeah, well, I would like to believe so as well. Yeah, with, that all the be... with all the teams there, that would be fantastic. Well, you send him our regards, and I do hope that he, uh, that, uh, he, he remembers our small folk here back at, back at home. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Come back and visit us. We want to know how it all goes. Uh, talking to us about the Hyperloop and the fact that his team is going to present it to the Texas University, the A&M University, Rory Sung Pusholi, good luck. Thank you. And, uh, and I suppose goodbye and good luck. That's the big thing for you. Let's take a